Hey, 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 welcome back. I'm going to take a break from doing my who knows how many part series of the history of the United States according to Sergeant Robert Horton. It's really hard to say those three words in a row. <laughs> and I'm just going to do uh, basically a rendition of my comment that I made on a YouTube video that I watched that had uh, Candace Owens and Charlie Kirk, a couple of right wingers in there. And so this is just my reply. I thought you might think it's entertaining. So here we go. Indoctrination trumps the ability to think critically. That being said, neither socialism nor capitalism is the answer when the public is dangerously ignorant. Hey, Candace and Charlie, here's a suggestion for you both and whomever is in your circle of thought. Avoid speaking the word democracy. This country is absolutely not a democracy. Democracy is close to socialism. Our founding fathers hated democracy. This country is a constitutional republic. Therefore, per the Constitution, the people are in no way obligatory to anything that the democratic establishment says or even legislates. We the people are the beneficiaries of that limited liability public trust contract. It is clearly stated in the preamble that the people are sovereign. You might just want to learn what that term actually means. It sure as heck doesn't mean that a fictional entity in the form of a concept that has been put on paper and called a government has any dominion over a live being. The United States is the great experiment, put forth with Freemasonry concepts, by the way, in which the common man has been granted the right to self-govern. This destiny entails much study of the system in which those rights are granted and an indoctrinated propensity for critical thought in order to gain vital existential knowledge. Now, judging by 99% of the videos that I watch and the comments I read about them, the experiment is a grand failure. They threw the peasants a bone and the peasants squandered it. As their masters predicted, they chose breads and circuses over personal responsibility and therefore chose comfortable enslavement over dangerous freedom. So that was my comment. Uh, you know, we all need to wake up here and put these concepts into practice whenever an authority of any kind, you know, alleged authority, says, hey, you can't do that. Hey, stop. Hey, show me this. Hey, do I don't care what they're saying that you have to do. You simply reply, hey, absolutely, upon you providing proof of your jurisdiction over me. Do you have control over my physical body, which is my property? Are you saying that you now have uh, control over my liberty and my freedom, my constitutional rights? These are rights that I had even if the Constitution never existed. The Constitution merely protects the rights that I already had. They were just simply put on paper. Why was this done? Well, because people have a propensity to become ignorant, uh, they get comfortable, and there are people with intentions that aren't necessarily good. Uh, and even if they are, it doesn't mean the end result will be good. And those people uh, are not enveloped into the breads and circuses as much. And they have many more of them. They want control. Money begats power, and power begats control. This is their endgame. And... 
the only way it can be stopped is if people learn that they are people and not slaves, not property. If you own your body, do you own your body? If you do own it, can somebody tell you what to do with it? You own it, right? It's yours. Can they? Does it make sense to you? Does it make sense that a state of mind in the form of a concept that has been put on paper and agreed to by a bunch of people that also signed it, I didn't sign it, you didn't sign it, does it make sense that that entity, this formational concept, can tell you what to do with your body? I mean, come on, guys. It's preposterous. Now, I get it. We were all indoctrinated to think this way. But it's time to stop. It's time to stand up. Not by yelling. Not by saying no. Don't ever say no. Say, absolutely, absolutely, I want to do that for you. I want to do that. I want to pay you. I want to agree to that. Upon you, proving that you have control over me. Prove your jurisdiction. If you can prove it, of course I will. I want to do what's correct. So I hope that gives you an idea. Uh, this one's going to be kind of short. I'll do my series and start that again soon here. Just wanted to throw one out here. It's been a little bit. So, yeah, I, I appreciate you all, man. Uh, you know, please, please, uh, you know, like, subscribe, and, and share this stuff, uh, you know, because, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword there. As soon as I get big enough, they're going to come after me. You know, even though I take, I don't take side, I don't take the side of the people. I don't take the side of the, the POSs either, of course. I take the side of objectivity. If you do not take the time to learn the machinations of the system that you're in that can control you, you're acquiescing to the fact that it's going to control you. If you do learn the machinations, you are in control. And it's very peaceful. Everything's contractual. You know, there's no need for a fist to be thrown. It is counterproductive to what is correct. This is about productivity. This is about getting the right things done quickly, easily, and amicably for us all. Hey, I'll see you soon. Take care.